is 2023, and welcome back to the, the Hellbound Podcast. I'm your favorite actor and favorite character in Star Trek Discovery, Michael Chan. And who are you, Mr. Super Handsome Dude over in the UK? I am Alex Blackburn. I am the uh, co-founder of the Hellbound Podcast with Michael. And yeah, welcome back, everyone. It's um, We thought we'd uh, start the new year in February. <laughs> so uh, this is coming to you uh, then. And we're going to release yes, reviews, try and release reviews, uh, f- very short film reviews every Saturday. Um, so there'll be up and coming films and DVD or Blu-ray reviews, uh, possibly unboxings in the future as well. Um, oh, I have I th- unboxings ready. So yeah, I think that um, I think we're going to have some nice, really cool, interesting stuff coming up this year. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, welcome back, everyone. How are you doing, Michael? I am good. Uh, I had a good holiday season. Got to spend time with family. Uh, my daughter went to winter camp at her school, which was extremely nice. And then uh, January came along and uh, 2023 has been pretty good so far. You know, doing a lot of additions, doing some real estate. Uh, my kid's back in school and she's happy with that. My son has uh, getting his second tooth now. Although by the time this episode's released, <laughs> uh, his second tooth should be fully out. But uh, yeah, he he had some problems sleeping during the holidays, but now it's out. And uh, I spent I spent a good part of January um, digging into the video game Elden Ring, which, by the way, I do consider a horror video game because it has a lot of horror elements. Like those monsters look very, very, very horror like. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it it has some scary stuff but here's the here's the thing here's why it's even worse see it's it's real life horror um i died i died like within the first 10 seconds of the game i, I thought there would be no tutorial but no then after dying i ended up in a tutorial where i died more at the end of the tutorial i had died eight times i walk out of the tutorial first first person i see i thought was some kind of castle guard walk up to it thinking i can press y on my controller to talk to said knight you know a knight in golden armor with a golden armored horse i mean you would think that's a good guy no axe comes down i'm dead again i have died so many times now in the first few hours of that game that it is a literal real life nightmare for me so it is both video game horror and real life horror to play elden ring even though it has been recommended to me over and over and over by everyone and i uh apparently the difficulty level is just a part of these souls like games they call them um based on the dark souls so i think i think this is the same uh, yeah Uh, But regardless, these Souls-type games are supposed to be hard. You're supposed to learn enemy patterns, and and there's a lot of vagueness, so you have to learn the game. And, you know, as a a father of two and and, and now a full-time actor, finally, it's kind of hard for me to do that. But I am not going to quit. I am taking a hiatus, though, to play uh, One Piece Odyssey, which is not a horror game. It's a pirate anime game. But I just I need to kill a, a few things instead of getting killed a hundred million <laughs> times. I just need to defeat something. Yeah. Just just you know, just just to feel like my soul is pieced back together. My dark soul is pieced back together. Um, so I need to go on an Odyssey to do that. Um What about you, Alex? How was your holiday? How's your twenty twenty three? Uh it started off pretty well and I'm in terms of work and kind of the uh, the the day to day stuff. I, I'm I'm pretty much blocked to uh, edit or shoot something until the beginning of March, so it's it's completely crazy, really really crazy, and I've just got to learn to manage that production time really well because I'm aiming to shoot a short film at the end of January uh, with a, with an actor friend of mine and she's she's super talented and hopefully get to talk about that more soon we just need to lock in dates the script's written i wrote it about five years ago and then refreshed it uh last year 
Um, it's a short film, a horror short film. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's really hope. I really hope we can get that done because just because of her timing, she's worked on. Um, I think it was World of Warcraft game or Warhammer twenty thousand. I think it is recently, uh, and so her time is really kind of tricky to kind of work around. So we need to kind of work that out. Uh, Wait, been watching. She, she works for she works for Games Workshop. No, she's done the. Um, there's been a um, a triple A game that came out. So uh, I think it was a PS five game oh, or PS5. a PC game. Uh, Dark Tide. She yeah, she's been working on it for two years so far. Oh, wow. uh, so, like, so she, I heard good things about Dark Tide. Yeah, she's working on um, additional DLC stuff. So she's been doing oh, voice nice. work for two years, and she was telling me lines of dialogue, and so it's, that's really fascinating. So um, hopefully, she'll be on a, an episode of this show because she's been in a couple of horror films and a couple of huge films as well. Um, but hopefully, that'll be coming up. But I've been watching a lot of horror Blu Ray Blu Blu rays recently. And Ooh. most notably, this one I'm showing Michael now, uh, the fog. Oh my goodness! And I love the artwork on this. I think it's absolutely fantastic. That's uh, the original. That's the original. <laughs> not not the one with Tom Welling in. That is her. That's <laughs> awful. Really awful. Um, <laughs> I remember watching the remake of the fog and going, "What on earth is going on?" That is a definite do not recommend movie. Yeah. Um, it was it was bad. Um, have you ever have you ever watched a film like this with a group of friends that you've picked? You've decided, oh, let's everyone let's watch this film. I really love it. I hope you like it. When I showed this to university classmates uh, in two thousand and six, everyone hated it, and I loved it. And it was such a weird scenario because we're in halls of residence in Manchester, and I picked the film. And every every basically every other night, unless we were going out someone would pick a film, host it in their small room, and then kind of talk about it. And it was a really fun kind of aspect of uh, university life. And I picked that and everyone hated it because you know, I, I don't know why. I really don't know why. Because a lot of other people, they would pick um, like stupid comedies or big budget special effects things. And I would pick things that, you know, people might see as dated, but they are classics in my eyes. But you know, it's down to personal taste in the end, isn't it? I mean, it's like when you show uh, the thing to yeah. people nowadays, or The Exorcist. Um, Absolutely, I remember because yeah. I watched The Exorcist about ooh, twenty years ago. But still, at twenty years ago, it was still pretty. <laughs> you know, like it, it's already far past when The Exorcist was released, and I remember going, "This isn't scary to me." Uh, in fact, I laughed a couple of times, it, you know, like I didn't mean to, like I, but I like, I can imagine when the exorcist was released, how yeah. terrifying some of the imagery, uh, was yeah. for people at that time. Like that is some terrifying stuff. I mean, it has even, it, it, it kind of holds up nowadays. There are parts that don't, but mostly like, I get it. I get why people are scared by the exorcist but just like that like if you show people a lot of like older horror i don't think a lot of people now would get it no exactly because it's not it's not a snobbish thing but it's um no i, I for me the core thing is you can almost forget everything else but the story is so important um <laughs> There's a film where the story kind of wavers. This is another another film I'm going to show you that I watched. I think I've talked about this before, but I watched it again on my own. Um, Vicky and I watched this originally, so we watched uh, this Cat People. So I really enjoyed I this film. That. It's such a... It's kind of all over the place. And I do like the piece of music that uh, David Bowie wrote, the, the song he wrote for it. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, and something very sinister about Malcolm McDowell. Ever ever since I saw him in A Clockwork Orange, I thought he's a kind of an oddball. And he was, you know, he was great, really great in Star Trek, I thought. Um, but yeah, yeah and then was, then yeah. I picked this up as well. So I picked this up recently. Uh, so this is a new, this is a new screen. Yes! One of my um, faves. But I'm I'm still a huge fan of uh, uh, and supporter of physical media just because my internet's gone a bit ski-whiff recently. Uh, mm -hmm. 
I still buy physical media, but it's yeah. only for nowadays because I can't have that much clutter anymore now. Yeah. It's right. So I've decided, you know what? Physical media is only for things that really, really blow me out of the water. Uh, for example, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Masterpiece. I, I think it's the best film last year for me. I loved it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But going back to The Fog, I just want to mention a couple of things for people who don't know. It uh, uh, is directed by John Carpenter. It has a screenplay by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill. And it was released on February 1st, 1980. February 1st being important because that's the day today that you're listening to this since we're releasing this episode on February 1st, 2023. So good pick for a topic of conversation, Alex. Yeah, I do. um, There's something I really like about the atmosphere of Carpenter films and the fog and it's got you know Janet you know Janet Lee's in it, a daughter Jamie Lee Curtis is in it. It's it's uh, oh there's there's something I kind of cry out and I've got ideas for wanting to shoot even just scenes from the film and trying to recreate and put things in visually in what I want to do. You know Dean Cundy's the cinematographer. He worked with Spielberg. He's done huge films. He he was a cinematographer of Jurassic Park and mm-hmm. um yeah and it's. Yeah, it's a great film. The Blu-ray is fantastic because it's got a commentary. I think it's by Carpenter and Dean Cundy. Um, audio commentary by Carpenter and Deborah Hill, which is awesome. And there's a separate one with Adrian Barbeau, who was Carpenter's wife, who's the uh, radio presenter. Um, and also production designer Tommy Lee Wallace. So the Blu-ray is worth picking up just for those commentaries, you know, for production. I've learned so much about filmmaking and lighting and all sorts of stuff from you know even from the highest levels like ridley scott when he's talking about kingdom of heaven talking about certain small aspects of production and blowing light outside of huge tents when everyone's lit properly and it's fascinating you know the behind the scenes of these things so i think it's so important and sadly some of that's being lost you know there are behind the scenes stuff that comes with buying on apple tv and other platforms, but the commentaries is a huge thing where you're documenting the filmmakers' thoughts and what they were going through, and um, mm-hmm. so it's something that's missed missed out really. Like I listened to one on North by Northwest. The screenwriter did a commentary before he passed away, and that to hear the you know to him talk about Hitchcock and all that's uh, uh, it's a great kind of uh, look back at how these films were made. Moving on from uh, masterpieces and incredible cinematography and good lighting and all that to my uh, topic of discussion for today, uh, which is the complete opposite, I would like to talk about a film that uh, my best friends and I just watched recently. Um, it is called Birdemic 2, Resurrection. Right, okay. <laughs> I can see your face right now. You're like, oh no, I'm, I'm here we go. go. This is another uh, shock NATO, isn't it? Uh, oh my god. So, uh, directed and written by James Nguyen. Um, it is the <laughs> follow up to Birdemic One Shock and Horror. Now, if you've watched Birdemic One, the original, you'll or at least have seen the trailer, you will know that Birdemic One uh, had a lot of people intrigued and watching it because the trailer showed a bunch of people who 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 were not really acting oh my god <laughs> this oh uh, my god michael uh, this doesn't and, look and like being it. attacked by basically uh animated gif birds or clip art birds oh at times god. as well um and and they're just flailing and that that's the trailer uh, I remember seeing the, the Birdemic 1 trailer and going, I have to watch this. This looks like a, a train wreck. I have to watch. And thank God, uh, same group of friends, we watched Birdemic 1 a few years ago. And it's one of those movies where it's so bad, it actually is good because you can see that they were serious about making this film. Like, it's they're, they're trying, but just everything failed. Like, everything failed. Oh, and, my God. Um, um can you it's t- one of those types of movies where you watch it and then it becomes a social experience because once you've seen it once you don't need to see it again but you do talk about it forever 
So then Birdemic 2. Birdemic 2 is uh, available, by the way, on Tubi. You can watch it for free. It has commercials. Trust me, you'll need the commercials because your brain needs a break. Um, Birdemic 2 was made with a budget of $300,000 US, which by the way, for what they came out with, I am shocked that, that they couldn't do better, but whatever. What's the premise, uh, What's the premise, Michael? <laughs> uh, Birdemic 2 follows uh, people trying to make an indie film. Yeah. And, 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 and the blood rain from the original uh rains on la and resurrects a bunch of ancient birds uh, along with some 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 people including cave people and and people in cemeteries this has got to be one of the worst trailers i've ever seen <laughs> I'm what I'm uh, basically. Uh, I might seem distracted, but whilst Michael's talking about the film, I've just been checking out Birdemic Two: The Resurrection trailer on YouTube. And no, by, by all means, how um, someone this looks like a um, I'm not going to say a student film, but this is it's worse. The effects um, are horrific. I think I think legitimately think James Wynn, uh I think he. Saw the it's like Tommy Wiseau, right? It he looks exactly that's exactly who I was thinking of while seeing no, this it. is worse than I know, but this is worse than the root. But the, the whole point is it's it's a filmmaker who made something honestly, who made something seriously without trying to be bad, and it came out so bad, it's a cult classic, and people fall in love with it. Now, Tommy Wiseau never followed up the room with like the room two or anything, yeah. But James here decided, you know what. I'm going to try to make another one since I'm making a lot of money out of the very little I clearly spent on the first movie. And so he 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 somehow has $300,000 and I feel like the second movie a lot of the bad stuff, like the terrible filmmaking is on purpose because there are a lot of meta references. Like I mean it follows independent filmmakers. There yeah. is even an Asian character that talks about making a film about birds attacking. So it's just him, right? And there is like, a Tom, there is someone in the trailer that looks like Tommy Wiseau as well. Kind of. <laughs> He's got that like character, a character. Yeah, with a bad black long, wig. Long black yeah. hair, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, no, that's a character from the first movie. Oh, my God. But there are characters that come back from the, from the first movie. Um but this film, despite I think being bad on purpose, still was still achieved the so bad it's good aspect of it. It's not so bad it's good as the first one. So the first one is better because again, I do believe he made that honestly. So it just came out bad. This one, he understood what made it bad, the first movie bad, and then came into this making an absolutely horrid film. But it's so bad. Like I was laughing the entire film. I'll give you examples of bad things. Um, they have to blur out people's faces, license plates, ads, uh, billboards, uh, uh, store uh, signs, everything. So everywhere you go, there's blurs everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Uh, plot holes galore. Like when the zombies show up, they only have a certain amount of money to hire a certain amount of actors to be zombies so it's the same ones and no matter how many times they get killed with headshots they come yeah. back and then they never even deal with like once the birds are dealt with no one says anything about the fact that there are still zombies human <laughs> zombies uh there have a scene where uh, a woman gets attacked by a uh, jumbo giant jellyfish which they every character keeps saying over and over again Jumbo giant jellyfish, jumbo giant jellyfish, jumbo giant. Anyways, so uh, but that scene is just a a a animated GIF background of water. They filmed a woman's legs just flailing around like this, just oh her legs. God, they filmed yeah. that and they inserted it, and then had the worst CGI jellyfish ever, just swim up to her legs and then had her twitch a little, and then they cut to an actress uh, coming out of the water. 
and the blood the scratches and and the blood continue this continuity errors galore <laughs> with the blood oh my god also oh. i don't know how he did it but james was able to somehow rent out a part of universal studios yeah. in la how did he get the budget to do that i don't know like how'd you get the permission to say you know unless you're a huge film how why would they tarnish themselves with that <laughs> I don't know. They even have it like, oh man, I think they got royalties to songs and just to, just because they didn't, honestly, this film could be about 20 minutes long. That's how Jesus. much story really is. So they had to draw it out with montages that they clearly had to pay rights for music for. And they yeah. play entire songs. They even had some guy, like they brought in a singer to sing his own song uh in a nightclub scene or a bar scene whatever i don't even know what that mm-hmm. was supposed to be it's it was shot in a studio that was really poorly put together and the poor guy was standing essentially on an apple box singing his entire song while the cast was just partying and eating there was no point to that scene really uh so <laughs> there's oh just a God. lot of that <laughs> It's on purpose, though, isn't it? The bad effects. And stuff, this right? time, I think it's on purpose. I, I do believe it's on purpose. But it's still... The creativity in how bad this film can be is incredible. It's just, like I said, James Nguyen understood what made his first movie bad and what made fans of the film like it, <laughs> even though it was so bad, and was able to almost replicate it in the second film, but like I said, it's very obvious at this point that he's in he's in on it. He knows. And he's yeah. it's all on purpose. But it's still worth a single watch with a group of friends with some alcohol. Because it is a it was it was for my birthday party. Okay. <laughs> like that's why we watched it. <laughs> oh and God. it was just wow. We, it was a hoot. We we like my wife, Jess, her brain exploded. Like, she couldn't process anymore while oh watching Oh, my God. That. Did she actually watch the whole thing? She, I mean, f- thank goodness for her. You know, our son needed, like, he wasn't able to sleep, so he was there with us for a while, and then she had to take him up to put him, you know, to bed. So she got to skip a part of it. But her brain was so thoroughly wrecked just by the first part that she watched that it just she needed that break it's that bad but this also like we're sitting here talking about three hundred thousand dollars us and meanwhile my own production company very new uh was able to make an award-winning short film that's been you know selected at a bunch of festivals and we are struggling to even come up with a hundred thousand dollars canadian and somehow james Nguyen got three hundred thousand us to make literally one of the worst films i've ever seen and i am not bitter because i think good for him good for him (laughs) he made something i guarantee you he made money i guarantee you he made money dude he got distribution on tubi oh my god what for the second one or both pardon for the second one or both of them both of them are on tubi uh there's now a third one i believe that oh I will eventually God. watch and probably review on here. <laughs> Thank God it's only, what, an hour and 19 minutes. That's the second one, yeah. <laughs> it's an hour too long. <laughs> yeah, it sounds it sounds like a scene. Oh, my God. So, so my official score is, like, minus 10 out of 10. But, like, my should you watch it, watch it once with friends. Yeah. Have a good time. Don't take it seriously. If you're a snooty film film watcher, don't watch it because <laughs> you're gonna hate it. I've got some really. I just read some. I uh, brought it up on Wikipedia. Uh, <laughs> with Birdemic to the Resurrection. You were saying it's three hundred thousand dollars. This is hilarious, <laughs> right? In October 2016, 
and an Indiegogo campaign was raised in order to finance the third film of the series. The funding <laughs> the funding was eventually closed, with roughly only five hundred and ninety six dollars raised out of five hundred grand needed. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, Despite no. that, it was announced in March 2021 the production of the third film had begun. <laughs> and it is out. It is definitely out. Birdemic 3 Sea Eagle. Yeah. Was oh released god. last year in 2022. <laughs> uh with a re- yeah, release plan of 2022. That's right. And it says at the end of the reception, the worst film of the year. <laughs> Uh, oh, so, uh, listeners, I will eventually be watching Birdemic 3 Sea Eagle and telling you uh, how that went. <laughs> oh, my God. It's got a... How? How did it get the money? <laughs> Do you know what the funny thing is? On um, Rotten Tomatoes, it's got no... It's basically grayed out the tomato meter. Because there's only two, <laughs> there's only two critic reviews, so it doesn't even register, <laughs> and it's got audience score of twenty six percent. Well, make of that what you will. Oh my god, there's a hundred reviews and over a hundred reviews. Just so you know, so Birdemic two had a three hundred thousand dollar budget. Birdemic threes is a hundred thousand. I expect it to be two thirds worse. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if that's self funded. I really I wonder, would be surprised. I, Birdemic one budget. Let's see what Birdemic one was. Ten thousand dollars. <laughs> my short film cost fifteen thousand dollars. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think I think we have to invite invite James on the podcast. I really do. I, w- I want James to win on our podcast. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> I love him. You have no idea. I, I, this man is living the dream. Making, oh. like, no, I'm serious, man. He's make, he has the funds. How? Oh this my God. Oh my amazing. God. I just found a picture of him. I think we'll end up sharing this on this is picture. This, this is the one with him uh, with the cigar. Yes. Yeah. So that's the, that's a, that's a copy of a Hitchcock picture. So yes, Hitchcock's gone with a crow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love this, right? There's an interview with him on his webpage. We're not going to watch it, but it's how to master 3D. <laughs> he, he gotta, you got to master the basics first. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Birdemic 2 is so cheap, they couldn't even afford a real ambulance. They had to CG one in. I think, uh, I think this is going to be your first... Depending on how many we do and what we do, I think this is going to be your first. We could just clip this up and put it on a on a Saturday just to review the film. I think this might <laughs> this might be the series of films you have to cover. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> you could just just five minutes of me laughing. That's yeah. it. It's like Michael Chan's review of Birdemic Two, just laughing. <laughs> oh my god. I can't. Oh, oh but no, I guys, I'm actually, I'm not joking. Um, kudos to James because it's not easy. Okay, like as a producer myself, I know how hard it is to get money to make anything, and for him to be able to get money to make his films is an incredible achievement, and to make money off of those films is is an achievement. Right, it has yeah. like there has to be marketing of some sort, and and and, and... <laughs> I love I love the kind of weight you put behind that marketing of some sort. <laughs> yeah, but he made money; he had to have. Oh, let's hope so. so let's hope again. So. Still, he has distribution on Tubi, like that. That yeah. says something. Well, if he's got distribution, you can also there. buy it on um um Google TV. You can purchase this film. So like, and there's physical media you can buy too. He um, budgeted the first film. His own income was the ten grand. Oh, absolutely, I believe yeah. that. <laughs> I mean, my my yeah. uh, like the short film that I co-produced, Fishbowl. It, it, yeah, we self-funded. Of course, we did. 
and the next film we're doing, which we're filming in April, which is also a horror film, uh, will will also be self funded because that's that's how you start. But three hundred thousand, no way that he self funded that. So, James Wynn, good for you. I I you know I applaud you because you clearly worked hard and found a way. You found a way to do it. And dude, if you can make those films and make money, I salute you because I I want to. That's the dream. I agree. I it is the dream. It really is to to make any feature length. It is, it is the dream. Well, clearly, they're having fun, right? Like, um, I, I want to. I want to have. I almost want to have him on the show just to, just to sit back and listen to him and see what his kind of a guy is, you know. And apparently, in 2016, he's got a, there's an interview with Vice where he says he's hoping eventually to make Birdemic Three Sea Eagle. Which will be his last film. <laughs> well, he made it, so I guess that's his so last is film. It, is it out? Is Birdemic 3 available? Yeah, it is. Oh my it's god. It's out. It came out last year. So oh my, um, oh my god. Available Amazon, surely not. Can, surely can we can't please buy can we please get James on the show so 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 I can beg him for Birdemic 4? Oh my god. I would love if he did Birdemic 4 Birds in Space. Oh my god, like then Jason, maybe like Birdemic Jason, five, Jason. Birds Through Time. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And uh Birdemic Six, Birds versus I don't know. Sharknado. Aliens. Pardon? Birds versus Sharknado. Oh my god. He needs Yes! Yes! Birdemic versus Sharknado. He needs to team up with Sharknado. Oh See? See, get him on the show. We're gonna help him. He's gonna get more movies made. It is a, it is a, it is a subculture. This kind of film, really, isn't it? It, it, it really is. <laughs> I just don't think anyone does it as, as well. As <laughs> I don't know how to say this. I don't want to say as crappy because even though you know, it, it, no, I don't. I have not seen like even Velocipaster. Oh my god! Which yeah, is. I'll do, I'll save that for a Saturday review, but even Velocipaster is not like this. Like this beats Velocipaster hands down. Okay, not not to turn this slightly serious, but um, where did the money go in the sequel? Where did that three hundred grand go? What uh, from your uh, from your personal experience? Where was that money spent? Where did that- it go? It went to <laughs> don't uh, say visual effects. <laughs> the sheer number of actors they had in the background, right? So the zombies and all that, and the characters that died. Uh, yeah. Uh, two, uh, royal. Uh, sorry, the yeah, the uh, the uh, the rights to music. Right, and that's the reason and they play. Songs. That's why right, you know because they he must have thought I've got rights to this. I pay for this. I'm going to use the entire song. That's correct. Yeah. Some of those songs, uh, the montage like was a mix of real footage and then stock footage. Okay, like oh my god, they had to draw it out. And um, finally, money went to uh, uh, oh boy, um, renting out Universal Studios, <laughs> and that's it. That's that's three hundred thousand right there. Okay, the it's the description, the very short description is a flock of sea eagles attack the coastal town of Santa Cruz, California. Why did the birds attack and who will survive? <laughs> oh, they're they're in Santa Cruz this time. Because yeah. their characters go to Santa Cruz in Birdemic 2. Oh my god. Uh so but then go back to LA. So I'm gonna get okay, okay. So they've already had a relationship with santa cruz so they were able to just i guess go back to whoever they talked to and yeah. i guess uh pay for some locations to use in santa cruz and there you go that's Birdemic three there's a there's a character in the cast list uh lee uh, uh, there's no picture on imdb but there's a, this character's called a doctor extinction <laughs> ah. oh my god oh my god anyway we got we should leave it there because I um uh, I actually probably will one drunken night probably watch at least the first one. 
I apologize um, ahead of time. It's fine. It's fine. For your It'll misery. Be, I'll have to be like, I don't know, sedated after or something because that looks just looks awful. <laughs> it it is. But at least we'll have stuff to talk about for the rest of our lives. <laughs> Yeah, my best friend Bianco uh, quotes that movie a lot. Quotes a it. lot, a lot, because that's the one of the things about these types of films, right? There's always amazing one-liners or amazing sentences that are so bad that you just can't stop quoting. That's true. I've got to say that's true. Yeah, oh Jumbo God. Giant Jellyfish. That's like um, okay. That's like uh, a warm up exercise, isn't it? It's like a warming up exercise that. I think I think this is enough for our listeners today. No, I I veered off a cliff with this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, um, if you like what you're hearing, want to hear more from us, uh, please consider subscribing um, to our show on your podcast platform of preference. Uh, it would help us greatly to get onto the front page. Also, if you can give us a positive review or like five out of five stars, 10 out of 10, whatever the rating system is on your pl uh, podcast platform, that would be much appreciated. We are also on social media on Instagram and it is at the Hellbound Podcast. We love to feature other artists' works like cosplays and makeup and music and all that. So if you have anything you would like us to feature on our Instagram, just send us a private message or DM and we will get on that. So again, that's at the Hellbound Podcast. Thank you so much from Alex and myself for listening to us. Uh, to us. We, we really appreciate your support. And as always, harness the darkness.